Hi. In this video, I'm going to talk about interfaces. Interfaces are a very fundamental thing in programming. They're really everywhere. Once you understand them, they will change the way you think about code. I'm going to explain you what it is, and I'm going to show you how you can apply this new way of thinking to write better code. Specifically, I'll be talking about the concept, the ID of an interface, not the language construct. There is a keyword interface in many static type languages that is sort of talking about the same, but it's a very specific implementation. The ID, the concept of an interface is applicable everywhere throughout your code that will actually improve your code. If you learn this concept later, you can easily learn the language construct and apply that same knowledge over there. That's secondary. First, the ID. So what's an interface? An interface is a way to expose functionality. I always like to use the analogy of a TV to explain interfaces. What is the interface of a TV? It is, of course, the remote control. We like to interact with the TV through the remote control. The interface of a TV is literally detached from the TV itself. If I want to change the channel and I would not have a remote control, I would need to walk to the TV and take a screwdriver and screw open the back and need a soldering iron to literally change the channel in the back of my TV. I need to know its insides. I need to know its inner workings to be able to change the channel if I wouldn't have an interface such as a remote control. This is not ideal. This is not how we like to work with the TV. As a user, as a consumer of the functionality of the TV, this is not a nice experience. As users of the TV, we'd like to think of the TV as a black box. We do not want to know how the insides work. We just want to get its features. We want to interact with it in an easy manner. The interface is like the layer in between the user and the actual internal implementation of the functionality to make it easy to access so that I do not need to be a mechanic or an engineer to work TV. I just want to press a button and get the value. This is really what interfaces are about. We apply this in code everywhere. And at this point, I'd like to introduce some vocabulary. We have a consumer, a user, which is the who or what is interacting with the TV, the implementation in this case. We have a interface, which is what we interact with, the remote in the example. It is great to have an interface. And we have the implementation, which is the functionality behind the interface. You can really think of this as three layers. You have the user, the interface, and the implementation in the back. The use of the vocabulary is really something that will improve the communication with your peers when doing a code review or talking about code in general. The moment you use these words, hey, as a user of this interface, it is inconvenient that I need to do this and this. Maybe we should change the interface. We can leave the implementation as is, but if we do it this way, this will help the refactoring or the thing I'm trying to achieve now. Using these words when speaking to colleagues will greatly assist communication. You can focus on what you want to talk about. You're not muddling the conversation by using vague words, thereby potentially implying the implementation is not okay. No, you're literally using the words that specify. I'm talking about the interface here. Let's look at some examples in the code. In here, I've got different variables. They all have their interfaces. We'll walk through them. Um, my first example is a string. Um, the interface of this variable is its name, mainly. Uh, there's also the type and I guess there's more than just a name and a type uh, because not everything can be expressed in a type system. For example, this is a domain name. This needs to be a valid domain name. As a user, I expect this to be a valid domain name. So I need to know its name, its type, and that it is a domain. Of course, it says so in the name. So this name, I guess, will be all right. Uh, it has implied this is how you could use it. And here you already see the power of interfaces. The fact that I can read from a name that I would need to use it this way is a good interface. Let's look at an object. So an interface of an object is its name, its type, which in this case is complex. So it's a container type. So it has multiple properties. These are all strings in this case. And there are maybe substructures, there may be nested objects in there or anything else. All of this is part of its interface. As a user, as a consumer of this object, this is all information that I need to have. If I don't have it, I cannot actually use this. And when we look at a function, we have its name, 
its list of arguments and its return type. So the list of arguments includes also their types, of course. I don't actually need to know the implementation of a function to be able to use it, as long as I would know that this returns a boolean. In this case, if I would have a some JS doc, I would know it will return a boolean. And right now I really have all the information I need to be able to consume the functionality of this function. I only need its name, its arguments and types, its return type. I'm actually actively, when writing code, trying to avoid knowing about internals when I'm only consuming a function. If I'm implementing this function, if I need to write this function every right now, then of course I would need to uh, open up this body and write all the code in there and know about its internals. But when this function is already there, I've written it earlier or somebody else has written it, it was there before, and I'm only consuming it from a different file, it would be really nice if I do not need to look at the insides of this function. So I keep this body collapsed. I am only looking at two closed brackets and I'm going to try and use this function this way because now there is no way of secret implementation details leaking to my side. I am at the call side of this function trying to implement something. It would be a shame if I am now suddenly depending on the internals of this function. This is the principle of programming against an interface and not against an implementation. I'll have another example. Here we are looking at a consumer and a implementation. The consumer or the call site is using a function that is implemented somewhere else. I only need as a consumer the name, the types, and I need to have a clue about its return value as well because otherwise I cannot actually use it. When writing this code, I might have this intermediary state where I know already I'm going to need to add these numbers. This is obviously a very complex mathematical operation that I'm extracting somewhere else. Bear with me. And when I'm ready to finally implement this, I can simply then start thinking about this implementation. But when I'm still in this phase of actually implementing the module, my library module, I do not want to think about this implementation. Therefore, I'm either folding this closed while, I've, while I'm implementing this, I'm only thinking about its interface. So I might as well only write its interface. This might not have an implementation while I am actually working on this. Later on, when I'm ready, I'll implement this. Then I can start reasoning about it, but then I can completely close this lip and really focus on this and write the unit tests for that. And speaking about testing, in test-driven development, it's actually required to first write only the interface with nothing in the function body, just empty. Then write a unit test that fails, that tests just one feature, then implement that feature. Then implement another test case, then implement another feature, one at a time each time. And another thing I recommend, especially at this point in time, when you have written your interface but not yet your implementation, you're really busy with this call site, this consumer of something, is to get feedback on your interface from a peer. Especially if you're starting out with your career, this is a great way to learn. Um, ask, ask your senior, uh, think about it yourself if you're further ahead in your career. Does the interface I came up with, does it fit in the larger code base? It's, it's grander IDs. Does this match with what we're trying to achieve here? Are there similar interfaces? Might I reuse one of these? Let's look at another example. On the left, you can find my tree walking code that I've used in one of my previous videos, the one on recursion. I have this data structure. It has children, which are arrays, and these can be children. These have children again. The interface of my walk function is again composed of the name walk, the function parameter, and the node parameter. And it has no return value right now. It's undefined by default in JavaScript, but that's a part of the interface as well, technically. Um, what if I would have used a existing interface for this? What if I didn't invent my own interface for this? For example, there is already a map interface in JavaScript, which is what I've done here. I've created a tree class instead of an object so that now on this class, I can create a method. This method does the same thing as you would expect from an array because this interface has 
is using a name, the map name, that has an expectation already behind it. You know map from using it on an array, you have an expectation of it is going to walk over the array and call this function and it is going to give me a new array with the result of calling that function on each item in the array. That is easily transferable to the concept of a recursive tree. So I've implemented this as a class. Um, I have some, uh, some version data in here that is nested. Every tree has uh, an item and potential children and each of these children can be another tree and therefore it is a recursive and nested data structure. I can use map, I pass it a function that takes its value and uh, it, it prepends it, prefixes it with a v. This is going to run on everything and it's going to give me a result. So let's look at how this actually works. So my map function is at first just going to run it on the current item of this tree. Then it will see if it has children. If it doesn't have children, this is where we quit the recursive call and we return a new one because of course in functional programming it is a best practice to always give a new value back instead of returning the existing tree so we never mutate anything. And the recursive call is running over the children and calling the map method of the new tree again, calling itself again. But the implementation is actually not the interesting part here, the interfaces. There are many interfaces already out there, like the map function from Array, that have an expectation attached to them. You already know how they work, you know what they do. So if we see this term pop up somewhere else, for example in my tree class, you can already sort of start assuming it will do about this and that. And this is the important lesson here. Interfaces have names, interfaces have types, and everything that it is communicates a certain expectation. As a implementer of an interface, you can decide what to communicate to your consumer, to your user. This is really powerful. To summarize, an interface is how you work with something from an external perspective. It is not how something works internally. And really separate these two concepts. It will level up your thinking and your talking. You're thinking because you'll write better code. And you're talking because you'll be able to have better conversations about code. Your code reviews will be more focused toward what matters. And that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have any thoughts or requests for things you'd like to see, leave a comment and subscribe. Thanks for watching.